Okay, today I want to talk about disobedient lost glory. Disobedient lost glory. Um, this uh, uh, Judges uh, 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 16, listen, it's a story that we all know very, very well. But there, there, there are some uh, 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 verses I'm going to bring out to explain how disobedience can make one to lose one's glory. Isaiah 119, let's see what it says, please. Put it on the board, please. Isaiah 119. I want everybody to read this, please. Isaiah 119, quickly. Isaiah is I-S. Thank you. Please, at the shout of Jesus, I want all of us to read this. Jesus, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. I didn't say that to Abby. It's the word of God. That if you and me, we are obedient, to his words, to his kingdom, to, every, to everything that contains the light, it is a sure bet, or whatever you call it, a sure Euro lottery. I don't play it, so don't be, don't say it's part of, Pastor, Pastor Mars is talking about it, though. I don't even have luck on things like that anyway. It's, it is a sure that we will eat the best of the land if we are obedient. But you see this story about this uh, 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 young man called Samson. When you read this story, this story is a very, very sad story. Very, very sad story. Let me first read something to you, uh, 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 Judges 13. Judges 13, 5 says, For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor, listen to this very well, listen to this instruction, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. That's God. That's, that's, that, listen, the instruction cannot be as clear as the way everyone has put in it regarding this young man. But the thing is this, right? This young man, this prophecy was told to the parents because he wasn't born, was he? So the parents, being in Christ, made sure that they did not put any razor in the head of this young man. They followed the instructions. So, but of course, it's going to get to a stage in your life whereby your parents, they're going to leave you. I mean, how many is with their parents? How many is still living with their parents here? Except if they come and do holiday. Uh, I know you are living with your parents, Ruth. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the grown-ups that are in front of me. Okay? By God's grace, in 20 years' time, I'll ask you the same question. So come and tell me you are still living with your parents. So the parents, they, they understood. And they did what? And they followed it to the latter. So, but of course, when this boy became older, they told this young man, that listen, nothing, nothing must touch your head. No razor, nothing. You must not cut these locks. Because if you cut these locks, your glory is gone. That is where your glory is. But they listened. So God Almighty made sure that he impacted him with everything that is needed for the office that God had given him life for. Because you, got to, you, because you have to remember one thing, right? That 
the, the parents were barren. So the thing is this. I looked at it and I'm like, if your parents can actually listen to visions, to prophecies, instructions, and obey it to the latter regarding a child, and tell the child that this is this, this is this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. Simple. So if the child follows that obedient rule, it is a must that the child will achieve what needs to be achieved and become what needs to, well, I mean, what needs for him or her to become in life. But from once the child takes another route, the route better be in the line of the word of God. But the word of God, when it comes to prophecies, don't change. Let me let you understand that. If God says your child is going to go through this wall, there is no amount of prayer that you can pray that will make the child to go through the door. Because what is waiting for the child is after this wall, not after this door. It is as clear as that. Now, the devil knew everything. Listen, the, the Yorubas used to say something. Only Ogiri, Onieti, right? That the wall has ears. You see all these adages from the from the Yorubas. You need you need to understand it very well. What they are trying to say is that you see the way I'm if I if I want to talk to you in secret, I call it secret, and I put my mouth in your ears. And I say, Forget it. Somebody have had it. Somebody have had it. So this young man, from the parents telling this young man. The uh, the uh, 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 um, the prophecy. The kingdom of darkness knew about it. The quickest way to grab a glory from a man, I'll tell you today, is through sex. Let me rephrase it. The quickest way to destroy the life of a man is through sex. The life of a woman cannot be destroyed through sex because woman is the carrier of life. That is why Evan says that the seeds of the woman will always bruise the head of the seed of the Satan. That is we men. The seed of a woman is not a woman. The seed of a woman is a man. That is why the glory that is always destroyed is that of a man. Go and read your Bible very well. So they know. As the devil will not attack what does not have a glory. Oh, why? Why should he? Why should he waste his time? Listen to what happened now. Judges 16 1. It says, Now something now, now something went to went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. This is where the problem starts. He saw a harlot and went in. Went in with a harlot is to have sex with a harlot. Now, let me explain a harlot to you. A harlot is a carrier of different kingdoms and an harlot is a carrier of different rituals. That's an harlot. Now, it is only through sex that you can have life, right? Okay. 
Now, having life through sex, that means that the only thing that creates it is through blood. And the Bible says, blood is life. So the thing is this, when you have a woman like Delilah, that different men from different kingdoms have gone in with her, there is a deposit of every rituals inside the woman. So you that you believe that you're standing right, that you have seen a beautiful woman, that you have seen what in our own days we call the lepasius, and you decide that, ah, oh God, just look at the attack and the defense of this lady. There is no, ah, I am going for this lady. You do not understand where this lady have been. You do not understand where this lady, where this lady is coming from. You do not understand the rituals in this lady. All you just want to do is to just have that, cut it short, that 30 seconds of sex. And that destroys life. It destroys life because the deposit inside, the deposit of the rituals inside that woman, you, from once you get in and you come out, you are coming out with all those rituals. That is why when I gave my life to Christ, <laughs> it took me about three months doing deliverance on myself. I didn't go to anybody. On myself, praying to God. Of the women that I've met in my journey. Some women don't need to go to God and cry. What are you talking about? That you don't wrong to a woman. And the woman decides to say, okay, I'm going. Some women don't need to go, don't need to go into the darkness or go to God. It is enough for them to be to be naked and curse. This young man broke every rule in the spiritual realm. Look at what happened. Let me read from let me read from verse 15. It says, Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me this three times. You, uh, listen, I'm just picking up by what's it called because you know you know these stories. And have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. Let me explain that to you. <laughs> you see, these are, these are our mothers. Let me tell you something. Pressing somebody to death, or rather pressing their soul to vex. Women, you know when you do something wrong? Ah, my wife is very good at that. When I do something wrong, my wife will just wake me in the middle of the night. Because number one, in the middle of the night, when they wake you up, you are still sleeping. Everything that comes out of your mouth then is genuine. You cannot lie. <laughs> You cannot lie. And the thing is this. They have, they, they, they have sat down on the bed. You, you are sleeping. They have sat down. They've Everything, they've asked it inside their mind. Yeah, yeah. Ah. No, Shelly, what? Uh -huh. I want to ask you something. That thing that you did, this, that, that, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. I just want to ask you, was it true? Ah, what do you want? Ah, at this time, I'm asking you. Because you know if you don't answer at that time, it's trouble. Or when you know that situation, because see, we men, we have two brains. Women has one. It is the truth. That's why that's why a woman can that's why a woman can uh, can do many things at the same time. But we men, we only have two. This top brain and this uh, down brain. Once this down brain is alive, this one shots. There's nothing you can tell us. Once this is once this is going on, this one is shot. That is us. So women, they know. Once they want something like this, it's like, eh, uh, they know that your 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 lower 
part of the brain is on. Eh, eh. You know, you know that your mother don't like me. Eh? And you did not do anything. Ah, my mother. Hey! Listen, babe, I'm telling you. It's not better for my mother. I'm telling you. My mother has cuckoo died. It was not better for my mother, baby. What? Is it true? My mother. Ah! You want what I will do? Because a man just wants what he wants. Once the man has finished, and what we're talking about, about your mother, well, listen, it's my mother. You need to understand. You're going to have to adapt. You, that is the way we are. So that is when a woman vexes your heart, you will do the things that your brain is not allowed to do. This is what happened to this, to, this, to this young man. He forgot everything. Everything. He forgot. Look at what he did now. 17 now says that he told, he told her all his heart and said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. No matter who the person is, you cannot tell people of the source of your glory. The Bible says the heart of man is extremely wicked. Tell me the person that can know it, if not for God. Extremely wicked. Because, because, because of, okay, it's a strong man. Let us say because of five minutes enjoyment. All is everything about the source of his glory. He told a person from a different kingdom. He did. I mean, he did. And from there, from this disobedience, everything, everything, Everything come crashing down. Let me show you something. In Genesis 3. Genesis 3. Watch. And it said to the woman, Have God indeed said, You shall not eat of every, every tree of the garden? This is Satan now. Of course, God said that. God told Adam. Adam told the wife. So they're having this conversation now. Now, and the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree of which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. You ask me, Did God say, Don't eat this tree? What is your business? Is there, is there any of your business? Just crawl if you want to crawl and walk if you want to walk, Joe. I have things to do. He hands. But when you start dialoguing with people that eyes have not seen where you're going, yes, I've not heard what heaven has for you. And you that you know it, you decide to dialogue with them thinking that their art is of the best of best for you. I am telling you, glory co comes crashing down. There was nothing wrong for as long as they obey what heaven says, everything was okay. Everything was okay. Look at, look, look at this verse 9 now. It says, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. Where are you? Lord, Lord, well. Simple geography. He's talking something else. So when you disobey, or rather, when we disobey, it opens up 
a different channel that even we cannot understand or that we are not supposed to understand it comes to our understanding and when all these channels come to our understanding there's only one thing it brings only one thing that it brings it brings judgment that's the only thing it brings if you had if they had not done what heaven asked them to do just like samson samson would have lost his power and they would have lost their glory as well regarding life but they did they did let me show you something in the book of john 19. i'm going to i'm going to show you something where is it I'm going to read from verse 22. It says, Then the soldier, then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, listen to this very well, took his garments and made four parts. Now, making four parts, right, is that you know you you are mothers, how you fold, you know, when you take your hero and you fold it, you know, you are making parts, just like you have to keep it in your cupboard or or whatever. Listen. I made four parts to each so uh, to each soldier apart and also the tunic now the tunic now the tunic was without seam woven from the top in one piece they said therefore this is where i'm going they said therefore among themselves let us not tear it but cast lot to it whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled do you understand that let me let me let me tell you this i want you to hold on to this there is no power in heaven there is no power in the darkness there is no power on this earth that can destroy glory even god himself cannot destroy a glory that he made so the thing is this they can always take the glory off you just like the one just like the just like the uh, 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 the talent of the uh, what they call it the the parable of the talent one just buried it without using it they can bury talent. But that they can kill it, it is a lie. That they can destroy it, it is a lie. So what they do is, in most cases, they give it to somebody for the person to be using the glory. Because they have arrested it from the one that is supposed to be the owner of the glory. The glory of Jesus Christ. What brought him to the cross is sin. Yes, we know he did not commit a sin, but sin was the one, sin placed him on the cross, the one you and I committed. So because of that, they were able to grab his glory. And they could not tear the, the glory and say, you take half, you take half. No, 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 no. That's why they say, let us cast lot and see who will take this glory home. Disobedient destroys a lot of things in the life of a christian there is no christian that wants to take a step a believer that wants to take a step that does not hear from god that do it or don't do it it is a must that it must happen let me show you let me quickly show you something in um let me show you something. I just want to show you something in Luke six thirty-eight. Luke six thirty-eight. No, let me read from let me let me let me read from verse thirty-seven. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use it will be measured back 
to you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you the reason why I'm reading. Why I'm reading this. Uh, 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 these two verses. These two verses is not about uh, you have some pastor that will preach it when it comes to money. This is not about money. This is about forgiveness. When you hold on forgiveness into your heart, there's no how your glory can blossom. It is impossible. And you think that you can judge this person, you can judge this. Once this person does something wrong, you cannot forgive this, you cannot forgive that. Listen, heaven is saying, because there is no perfection in every man, we all make mistakes. So because we all make mistakes, everyone knows that it's going to wait for, it's going to wait for every single one of us that refuse to forgive and that refuse uh, uh, not to judge people. It will wait for us. So the thing is this. How then can we recover the glory that has been lost inside disobedience? What month are we in? Uh -uh. You see? Thank you. Thank you. It's the world that knows that they're in the that, that they're in March. We spiritually we know that we're in the month of visitation. So it is a must that the disobedience that we have that we have displayed in times of ignorance, even in times that we know this month of divine visitation. If it is something that everyone will have to revisit us with for the glory to be restored, nothing is too late for heaven. There's nothing that is too late for heaven. It is the truth. Look at my mate, look at my mate, look at my mate. I want to be like my mate. Oh God, we went to the same university together. Eh? Is, that, is, that, is that the mansion? Look at him. Is that the business? Is this? Is that? Lord, I just want to be like that, that, like that, my mate. Lord, make me like that, my mate. All of a sudden, the mate died at the age of 42. Oh, Keep praying the prayer now. Keep praying the prayer now. The prayer must change, Abby. The prayer must change. Listen. When birds fly, there is no way that is recorded that they have accidents. Let me tell you something. The journey of everyone is different. The glory of everyone is different. You, your journey, you might get to your journey in a year. Lord might say, it will take six years for me. Just because heaven gives me a property at the age of 50, 60, sir, does not mean heaven is not going to give me good health to the age of 110 to enjoy it. So what is the one that has the mansion at the age of 30 and they did not invite Christ into it. They have misplaced their lives only for them to lose their lives at the age of 45. Don't compare yourself with anybody. The glory upon your life is a special one. And there is no how that glory will not be fulfilled. It is a month of divine visitation. Heaven comes in a manner that you do not know. It says, I will come like a thief. You don't even, you will not know. And I will bestow, and, and, and I will bestow blessings upon you. That's why the ones, that's why the ones in Zion, when, when they saw things that they believed they could never have, they thought they were dreaming. That is the way your case and that of mine is going to be in Jesus' name. Amen. But let us learn to be obedient with the word of God. Let us learn to understand that with the word of God, it is the only thing that can lead you and I to our place of refreshment. That is why Isaiah says that if you're willing and obedient, it is only then that you can eat the fat of the of the land 
God owns everything. And if God owns everything, and you and I, we are inside the word of God, that means automatically we own everything. Forget about whatever thing that is happening in the world. The Bible has told us that it is with our eyes we will see it on the television. It is with our ears that we hear it in the news. It is with our eyes that we will read it in the newspaper. But the prestigious pestilences in this world will never come to our dwellings. Because there is a particular grace that does not allow them to come in. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. I am grateful once again, Lord God Almighty, for a time like this. A month of divine visitation. Where, Lord God Almighty, that we have been disobedient regarding your words. Where you have asked us to move and we refuse to move, Lord. The things you have asked us to do, Lord God Almighty, and we did not do it. Once you have spoken, Lord God Almighty, even twice we had it, Lord, we still didn't do it. It has given the enemies the chance, Lord God Almighty, to take glory. I ask you this day, my Lord and my God, that you revisit every single one of us, my Lord and my God, with that vision, that dream, my Lord and my God, and that prophecy. The prophecy is, Lord God Almighty, that will lead us to a place of our rest, Lord, that will make us to eat the fat of the land, Lord. Lead us there safely, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, give back to us, Lord God Almighty, your words, Lord God Almighty, so that we can obey it, my Lord and my God. And let the visitation of your of the, vis, the visitation of your visions, the visitation of your dreams, the visitation of your prophecies, my Lord and my God, that we have ignored, let it come back to us this month, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. That's the reason why you said it's a month of visitation, my Father. And in the mighty name of Jesus, good things will surely visit us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. It is in this month, Lord God Almighty, that good health will visit us in the mighty name of Jesus. Steps that we have taken, Lord God Almighty, and we have not been able to get to the end, Lord, so as for us to have the harvest, Lord, it is this month, Lord God Almighty, that you are going to visit us, Lord God Almighty, with the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding for us to, uh, to accomplish in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a month of visitation, Lord God Almighty, a month whereby you will visit every health in these places, Lord God Almighty, and our families around the world, Lord, and you, will, and you will send us back to creation, giving us good health, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a month of visitation, my Lord and my God. It is this month, Lord God Almighty, for the ones that are for the ones that their freedoms are restricted in this country. Lord, I pray that this month you will visit the home office and make sure that their names are given, Lord God Almighty, so that they can be able, Lord, to walk freely on the earth that you have that you have made, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. It is this month of visitation, my Lord and my God, that you will visit every single home with the greatest of testimonies, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church, Lord God Almighty, visit us, Lord God Almighty, with the things that we have done wrong, Lord God Almighty, so that we can be able to correct it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you once again, my Lord and my God, for a beautiful day, a day that you have made. You said we should rejoice and be glad on it. That is what we're doing in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we have prayed. Thank you.